Uh, Veer Sangvi, uh, a lost opportunity or do you think there's still a door open? You never say never in politics, right? I think there's a door open. I, I don't think it's necessarily all over. The fact that there are two very civilized tweets that they've obviously been written in coordination suggests that there is no ill will. Look, this was always going to be a negotiation. Sonia Gandhi did not want somebody who didn't understand, according to her, the Congress ideology was an outsider. Prashant Kishore is through with being a political doctor. He wanted to be in politics. He knew, I think, he's aware of Sonia's views, that there would be resistance within the Congress. So it was a question of who needed who more. He made his move now, after the last negotiation didn't work, when he thought the Congress was desperate enough to get him in. Originally, I think Sonia's view was always that you're welcome to her come in, but you come in rather as the doctor does. You advise the patient on what's wrong, you prescribe medication, and when the patient recovers, you leave. That was not Prashant's view. Prashant's view was that the doctor moved in and took over the household. Obviously, there was going to be resistance to that, and the negotiation has gone on. And I think it floundered ultimately not because Prashant wanted some kind of organizational responsibility, but because of the things he wanted to do. People keep talking about the old guard and the old guard opposed him. The old guard didn't actually oppose him. The old guard is so fed up and so desperate, they were willing to take anything. The people who really opposed him were the people around Rahul Gandhi. What he wanted was not just for Rahul to have a much more reduced role. And you will note from your debate that the one thing everybody agreed on was that the Congress needs to replace Rahul as its face. But the people around Rahul also had to go. And I think they resisted. And that was where the most resistance came from. And that's where the whole thing ultimately collapsed. But we're all agreed that the Congress is in trouble. We're all agreed that it needs to do something. We're all agreed, I think, also that it had nothing to lose by getting Prashant Kishore. It'll just get worse and worse. But in a political party, particularly when you're down and out, the people who've hung around around you, who've been loyal to you, who say we will stick with you no matter what, it becomes difficult to tell them, hey guys, you got to go. We've but got this new guy from Prashant I mean, Kishore who says you're useless. It's, it, see, we were also discussing before you came on the fact that Rahul Gandhi is not even in the country yet again. Yeah. Uh, and that seems to have been a sore point as well, that he's not even part of these important discussions. So he is obviously reluctant on one hand, and yet he continues to be there on the other, as I said right at the beginning. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I think that's one of the great mysteries of the Congress. Almost anybody you speak to, and you saw the unanimity in your debate, agrees that if the Congress goes to the next parliamentary election with Rahul Gandhi as its leader, it will do even worse than it has done before. You can't keep doing the same thing again and again and think that voters will react differently. So when we all see this, presumably Rahul keeps saying that power is a bad thing and he's not in politics for power, sees this too. So why does he hang on? Why is he not willing to let go? If he really cares about the Congress, I mean, he likes going abroad, maybe he should take a sabbatical, go off for two years, get a PhD or something, leave the Congress to its own devices. It can only prosper. Do you think the party can move beyond the family? Because I thought one of the interesting things that Prashant Kishore had presented to them was, OK, let Sonia Gandhi continue as party president, but create the post of a working president who is a non-Gandhi. Let And this should not be... Uh, there's no alternative to that, as he had put it in that presentation. Is that workable? You think that they would ever bite the bullet on something like that? I think so. You know, I think the reason they called him back was because they had agreed to that kind of formula whereby Sonia is the top person, is the face, and someone like Prashant becomes a working president and does everything. But what is that everything? Prashant essentially is a disruptor. He would have got rid of lots and lots of people. If you do that, there will be a pushback. And I think that's what happened. I think when we talk about the Gandhis, we're really talking about two different things. There's not that much resistance to Sonia Gandhi being the leader. The resistance, the criticism is all to the siblings, to Priyanka and Rahul. And the fact that Priyanka was pushing for Prashant and the fact that Rahul has been away suggests that they had also been reconciled to not being high profile or whatever. But it's difficult to do in a party like this when everybody gets his job, not because of performance, because of per but because of personal loyalty, and they put pressure on you. The only way this can work, really, is if Rahul removes himself from the scene. And unfortunately, he's not willing to do that. Therefore, last question, Veer Sangvi, uh, what does that portend for 
opposition politics as we head towards the 2024 general election if you have a, a, a continued weakened congress that continues to be on the decline and it is supposed to be the pan india main principal party uh what does that mean then for the challenge to modi because the aap isn't quite there yet uh, and it would take time for them to to fill in those gaps yeah nidhi i mean figures vary but between 150 to 220 depending who you listen to seats are really between the congress and the bjp the bulk of the bjp seats come the fact that it has a strong political base from those areas because it's confident of beating the congress in the vast majority of those seats as of now that's going to happen again and mr modi is undefeatable the only hope is if the congress revives and the events of today suggest that's a long way off